Polynomial functions. Sketch graphs without a calculator. What are they? Polynomial functions are expressions that contain non-negative powers with varying degrees, coefficients, and constants. Why? Helps understand different courses including science. Interesting fact. In some species of turtle, the temperature determines if the egg will develop into a male or female. Lower temperatures lead to a male, while higher temperatures lead to a female. Now, let's look at the end behavior, so we can graph without a calculator. If the degree is even, then it looks like a quadratic function, or a u. We can form that u with our hands. So if both hands are up, then the leading coefficient is positive. If both hands are down, then the leading coefficient is negative. If the degree is odd, then the graph looks like a cubit function. So one hand is up, and one hand is down. If the leading coefficient is positive, then your hands form a positive slope. If your leading coefficient is negative, then your hands form a negative slope. Next, we have the multiplicity of zeros. Multiplicity is when a zero occurs more than once in a polynomial. If a zero is repeated an odd number of times, then the graph will cross the x-axis at that zero. So the graph on the right. It could have three zeros, five zeros, and so on. If a zero is repeated an even number of times, then the graph will not cross the x-axis at that zero and rather become a turning point. So the graph in the middle. It could have two zeros, four zeros, and so on. And finally, the graph on the left has one zero, which is a linear function. And we have seen that plenty of times in our math career. Now, let's take a look at the examples we're going to discuss in today's video. Let's take a closer look at example one. Now, let's read the steps. Step 1. Solve for the zeros and plot. Step 2. Divide the graph into sections. Step 3. Choose a number in each section. Step 4. Graph the result of each section. Now, let's read the question. Sketch the graph of f of x is equal to x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4. Let's write down our equation so we can show our work. Well, we can graph one point already. Do we know what that is? That is correct. The y-intercept, 0, negative 4. It is the only number without an x next to it. Now, let's find the zeros of the function. In order to do that, we need to factor. Since we have four terms, it is best to try factor by grouping. So we can factor an x squared from the first two terms and a negative 4 from the last two terms. So now we have x squared times the quantity of x plus 1 minus 4 times the quantity of x plus 1. Now let's combine the terms in front of the parentheses and write down the parentheses that is shared. So now we have the quantity of x squared minus 4 times the quantity of x plus 1. We still have one more step. Do we know what that is? That is correct. We can factor x squared minus 4 because it is a difference of squares. So now we have the quantity of x minus 2 times the quantity of x plus 2 times the quantity of x plus 1. Now we can set each binomial equal to 0 and solve. So now we have x minus 2 is equal to 0, x plus 2 is equal to 0, and x plus 1 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 2 for the first one and x is equal to negative 2 for the second one, and x is equal to negative 1 for the third one. Now, let's graph our x-intercepts. Now that we have that, we can graph. For the first method, we will use the charts from the beginning of the video, the end behavior and the multiplicity of zeros. So let's look at the given function. f of x is equal to x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4. What do we think is the degree? That is correct, it is 3, so odd. Which means the ends of the graph will look like a person with one hand up and one hand down. Now, what do we think is the leading coefficient? That is correct, it is positive 1. So our graph will have a positive slope if we slide the two ends together. Now, what do we do with the rest? Here, we use a multiplicity of zeros.
2, negative 2, and negative 1 each have a multiplicity of 1. So the line will pass through the x-axis. So let's finish the graph starting at negative 2. What do we do next? Do we continue the line through the x-axis or bounce it back down? That is correct. We go through the x-axis because negative 2 has a multiplicity of 1 and end up at negative 1. What do we do next? Do we continue the line through the x-axis or bounce it back up? That is correct. We go through the x-axis because negative 1 has a multiplicity of 1 and pass through the y-intercept negative 4 and end up at 2. Now, this is the graph of f of x is equal to x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4, more or less. But if you can't remember the charts, then we can divide the graph into sections using the x-intercepts. Let's start with section 1. To find whether the graph is above or below the x-axis, we pick any point in the section and substitute it into the factored form. For section 1, we picked negative 9. Now, if we have a calculator, just plug it in. But if not, sometimes the numbers get huge, and we don't like that. So we can just look at whether the result in each parentheses is positive or negative. So negative 9 minus 2 is negative, and negative 9 plus 2 is negative, and negative 9 plus 1 is negative. So now we have negative times a negative times a negative, and the result of that is a negative which means section 1 will be below the x-axis. Let's move on to section 2. This time we chose negative 1.5. And negative 1.5 minus 2 is negative, and negative 1.5 plus 2 is positive, and negative 1.5 plus 1 is negative. So now we have a negative times a positive times a negative, and the result of that is a positive which means section 2 will be above the x-axis. Let's move on to section 3. For section 3, we pick 0. So 0 minus 2 is negative, and 0 plus 2 is positive, and 0 plus 1 is positive. So now we have a negative times a positive times a positive, and the result of that is a negative, which means section 3 will be below the x-axis. Finally, let's move on to section 4. This time we chose 10. So 10 minus 2 is positive, and 10 plus 2 is positive, and 10 plus 1 is positive. So now we have a positive times a positive times a positive, and the result of that is a positive, which means section 4 will be above the x-axis. Well, you look at that. We match the graph using the charts. So we can choose whatever method we prefer. That is example 1. Let's move on to example 2. Now, let's read the question. Sketch the graph of f of x is equal to x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 6x squared. Let's write down our equation so we can show our work. Well, we can graph one point already. Do we know what that is? That is correct, the y-intercept. 0, 0. This time, we don't have a constant, so when we substitute 0 in for each term, the result will be 0. Now, let's find the zeros of the function. In order to do that, we need to factor. Since we have three terms, it is best to see if they share something. So we can factor an x squared from each term. So now we have x squared times the quantity of x squared minus x minus 6. What do we think is the next step? That is correct. We can factor x squared minus x minus 6 as the quantity of x minus 3 times the quantity of x plus 2. And all of that is times by x squared. Now we can set each binomial in x squared equal to 0 and solve. So now we have x squared is equal to 0 and x minus 3 is equal to 0 and x plus 2 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 0 and 0. We have 2 because of the square, and x is equal to 3, and x is equal to negative 2. Now, let's graph our x-intercepts 
Now that we have that, we can graph. For the first method, we will use the charts from the beginning of the video, the end behavior, and the multiplicity of zeros. So let's look at the given function. f of x is equal to x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 6x squared. What do we think is the degree? That is correct, 4. So even. Which means the ends of the graph will look like a person with both hands up or both hands down. Now, what do we think is the leading coefficient? That is correct, positive 1. So our graph will have both hands up since we have a positive attitude. Now, what do we do with the rest? Here, we use a multiplicity. 3 and negative 2 each have a multiplicity of 1, so the line will pass through the x-axis. However, 0 has a multiplicity of 2, so the graph will bounce, or not go through the x-axis. So let's finish the graph starting at negative 2. What do we do next? Do we continue the line through the x-axis, or bounce it back up? That is correct, we go through the x-axis, because negative 2 has a multiplicity of 1, and end up at 0. What do we do next? Do we continue the line through the x-axis, or bounce it back down? That is correct, we bounce it back down, because 0 has a multiplicity of 2, and end up at 3. Now, this is the graph of f of x is equal to x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 6x squared. But if you can't remember the charts, then we can divide the graph into sections, using the x-intercepts. Let's start with section 1. To find whether the graph is above or below the x-axis, we pick any point in the section and substitute it into the factored form. For section 1, we picked negative 10. Now, if we have a calculator, just plug it in. But if not, sometimes the numbers get huge, and we don't like that. So we can just look at whether the result in each parentheses is positive or negative. So, negative 10 squared is positive, and negative 10 minus 3 is negative, and negative 10 plus 2 is negative. So now we have a positive times a negative times a negative, and the result of that is a positive, which means section 1 will be above the x-axis. Let's move on to section 2. This time we chose negative 1, and negative 1 squared is positive, and negative 1 minus 3 is negative, and negative 1 plus 2 is positive. So now we have a positive times a negative times a positive, and the result of that is a negative, which means section 2 will be below the x-axis. Let's move on to section 3. For section 3, we picked 1. So 1 squared is 1, and 1 minus 3 is negative, and 1 plus 2 is positive. So now we have a positive times a negative times a positive, and the result of that is a negative, which means section 3 will be below the x-axis. Let's move on to section 4. This time we chose 20, and 20 squared is positive, and 20 minus 3 is positive, and 20 plus 2 is positive. So now we have a positive times a positive times a positive, and the result of that is a positive which means section 4 will be above the x-axis. Wait, look at that. We matched the graph using the charts, so we can choose whatever method we prefer. That is example 2. Now, it is your turn. So go ahead and pause the video here so you can take your time to answer the question, and I'll show you the results in 3, 2, and 1. Here are the intercepts, and using the charts to graph, here is section 1 and section 2 to verify, and here is section 3 to verify. Did you get it correct? Awesome. If not, there's always tomorrow.